Hey everyone, for this week's theme on Summer on the Bay, we're going to be talking about fish and more specifically the different adaptations that different fish have. So up here we have some different fish that I'll talk about. So on the top left we have a flounder, which is a flat fish and their adaptation is they have a flat body with their eyes on the both same side of their head and they lay flat on the bottom and they can kind of change their color to blend into what they're laying on. So different types of sediments are different, like grayish colors or tan or black, and they can uh, mix match their colors to match what they're laying on to ambush their pre prey. Uh, up to the right is an American eel, and their adaptation is that they create slime so that their predators can't grab them very well. And so some fish can grab them and then they can slither out of their grasp. Um, down to the bottom left middle, we have a clear enough skate and their adaptations are they're similar to the flounder. They're flat, they can lay on the bottom, but they can't really change their color like they can. And they have their tail right here. They don't have a barb like a stingray, but they have um, on their tail, they have uh, bacteria that grows on it, which can affect their predator if they get hurt by it. Um, right here, we have a seahorse. And their adaptation is to blend in with seagrass, like um, around here we have the lion seahorse, and they like to live in eelgrass bends. Um, down from that we have an Atlantic sturgeon, and it's probably hard to see, but on the sturgeon they have little bumps on the top and on their sides, and those are actually like bony plates that they use for armor. So when predators attack them, it's hard to get through that bony plate to actually hurt them. And then on the bottom left, we have the sunfish and their adaptation is that they're pretty big. Uh, they're not, they don't really have too many predators. They have some predators that are sharks, but they're the different type of fish. They look completely different. They don't, they're not built like a normal fish at all. And then the one in the middle is a lumpfish and their adaptation is similar to the Atlantic sturgeon. They have the armor kind of, you can see that they're bumpy all over and they're hard for different types of fish to actually attack them. So you probably see more like sharks or those type of fish that would really harm them. So what adaptations do all fishes have? We have A is fins, B is gills, C is scales, D is fins and gills only, and then E is all of the above, fins, gills, and scales. And if you said D, <clears throat> your answer is correct. So all fish have fins and gills, but some do not have scales. So like we talked about in the beginning of how the American eel has slime, um, the American eel does not have scales, as well as um, what is it? naked gobies do not have scales either. So they just have a layer of slime on that side of their body that they use as their uh, protection and their scales. So we're gonna talk about, as I said in the beginning, different adaptations and some fish ad adapt to getting away from their predators. So if you can think about fish, their main concern is eat or being eaten. So every day they wake up or they start the day off and they go and they look for food and they try and get away from their predators. So as you can see, we have some different pictures of fish eating fish. You can see there's a fossilized fish that was eating another fish, which is pretty cool. Um, so one thing they can do is they can be camouflage. So in all these pictures we have some type of camouflage. In the bottom there's a flounder as we talked about in the beginning. He's um, blended into the bottom. In the middle bottom we have a pipefish which is similar to the seahorse. They blend into eelgrass beds um, too. On the bottom left we have an oyster toadfish and they live in oyster reefs and you can see they have little particles or skin that floats around, around them to um, mimic some of the mud and stuff on the bottom. And on the top left, we also have another type of flounder. In the middle, we have a leafy sea dragon, which is similar to the seahorse. Um, to the top right, we have a frogfish, which, look, which blends into like corally type stuff. We don't have those around here. And then in the middle, we have the Atlantic silver side, and you can see it has a silver stripe on its body. And what they do is they have they um, school together. So when they're all swimming together, they have that stripe that glimmers off the water. And it's really hard for a pre predator to um, single one out unless they get away from their pod, away from their school. And then um, to the right, we have a shark. 
and they have um on the bottom is white so when you're looking directly up you can't see the shark at all because the sun makes everything look white and then when you're looking down you can see um that the shark's top is dark grayish um and that is so that when you look down you can't see them either which is a good um, adaptation that they have so we really only see a shark you can look sideways to them like we're looking at them now which makes um their camouflage pretty good another thing they can do is uh fish can hide so these pictures over here some types of gobies we don't have those type around here but they hide in holes similar to our naked goby they'll hide in dead oyster shells um, we have some clownfish uh, hide in sea anemones, and then down we have this is actually a stargazer. This is his head right here. These are his eyes, and that's his mouth. So they um, bury themselves in sand, and they are ambush predators. So if something swims above it, they'll jump out, and they actually can send an electrical pulse in the water and stun their prey, and then they'll eat it really quick. Another thing fish can do is they can be fast. So something that all these fish have in common is that they're torpedo shaped and they have a forked tail. So when fish have forked tails and they're a type of tor uh, torpedo shaped like this, it makes them go through the water very aerodynamically. So the, this is a striped bass and you can see it has a forked tail, not as forked as uh, the Spanish mackerel or tuna or bluefish. So that means he'd probably be one of the slower fish out of this whole group. And then you have a bluefish, a uh, Spanish mackerel, uh, tuna, and then either a marlin or a swordfish over there on the left. And as you can see, all of them have those really forked tails, and that makes them swim very fast. They're open water, moving fish. They're not like a toadfish that was on the bottom all the time, so they're always moving in the water. Um, some ways that a fish can also deter predators is by having spikes or having being able to blow up like pufferfish. So on the bottom right, this is a northern puffer, and when they um, feel threatened, they'll actually blow up like that, and they'll fill themselves with water or air, and they won't let it out, so a fish can't, or a predator can't open their mouth and get them in their body. And then on the top left, we have a striped burfish, and they're similar to the northern puffer, but they cannot blow up as much. They'll blow up a tiny bit, but you can see that they have the spikes on them. Unlike like a porcupine fish, they are not extremely sharp, so you could probably, you can grab a um, burfish and it will not hurt you too bad. But um, that is one of their adaptations. Um, and some have adaptations that discourage predators just from the looks or by hurting them. So all these fish have something in common, and that is spikes or fins that have um, frills on them. So as we talked about in the beginning, the skates don't have barbs, the stingrays do. And you can see the bottom left, this is a stingray, uh, looks like a southern ray. And this right here is his actual barb. So on their tail, they have their long whip tail and the barb is actually right around here. This is just their long tail that goes off. So when people are catch them, you can easily get barbed by not knowing where the barb is. Some people might think it's here. But if you're not very careful, you can grab them and they can actually whip their tail around and stick you, which is not very good because they can have bacteria on their barbs. And then on the bottom right, we have a lionfish, which we don't have around here, but they have their um, toxin in their spines, which is deadly. Uh, right here is a stiff back perch and they have lots of spines on their dorsal fin. And then also with the rockfish, uh, AKA the striped bass has similar to the perch. And in the middle we have a catfish and catfish have spines on their dorsal fin and on their side fins as well as i think on their bottom so when catfish are caught usually they'll stick their spines out so um if you grab them they'll poke you so that's their uh, adaptation and on the top left we have a trigger fish and you can see oh, that's not work. right here is their spine so similar to the perch and the um, rockfish you have his spines right here, they go up, and then on the bottom as well. And the cool thing about the triggerfish is, is this main spine will never go down unless you push down the second spine. So that's why it's called a triggerfish, because that's the trigger to make that spine go down, which is a pretty, pretty cool. So what we're going to do is, in a second, we're going to look at some different types of fish that I have um, laid out. 
and we're gonna try and tell their different annotations just by looking at them to see if we learned anything from today's PowerPoint. Hey everyone, so we're back and we're gonna go in and look at our fish real quick. And all these fish were caught by the VIMS trawl survey and they did not make it. So that's why we have them. We don't go out of our way to kill any fish. So the fish that do not make it out of the trawl survey, we asked them to give them to us for education purposes to teach kids and adults about uh, different fish and their adaptations. And what we usually do is we have a fish for each person. If you were here, you get to look at each fish the, by themselves and switch fish and all kinds of different things. We'll talk about them. But unfortunately, we're online now, so we'll be learning about it via online. <laughs> so right here, we'll start with the catfish. And this is, a, as I said, a catfish. And as we talked about in the video, um, they have some spines on their body. That's their main adaptation. So right here, you can see there's a spine. They have a spine on each side, and then on their dorsal fin right here would be one coming up. Um, the catfish are more, if you um, classify the fish as a slow swimmer, medium swimmer, and a fast swimmer, a catfish would be more of a medium swimmer because he has a more, he has a little fork tail, but it's more rounded than like a striped bass or a mackerel. And you can look at its teeth and its mouth. So they would usually eat small invertebrates on the bottom, probably uh, crabs, little fish, dead things. Um, so that makes them different. And you can see the little whiskers right here that they use to feel. They, um, some use the feel around when they're on the bottom as well. We'll move on to our next fish. This is an oyster toad fish. And similar to the catfish, it looks kind of similar to it, as I should say. And you can see in its mouth, it has a lot sharper teeth than the catfish does. Um, oyster toad fish usually eat small invertebrates, small fish, um, small things on the bottom, little oysters or clams. And they usually live on oyster reefs, so they don't travel very much. So on their tail, you can see it's more of a rounded tail. So they would be more sitting on the bottom. They don't need to attack anything really fast. So they are more of a um, slow predator. And as you can see, it's hard, well, it's hard to see on this back. They have some uh, spikes, some spines right here. So if he was alive, he'd flare out his gills, which are right here. And his um, spines would be poking out. So right here we have a stiff back perch and as we talked about in the video i mean earlier we uh discussed how they have spines similar to a striped bass and you can see his dorsal fin spines and then he has some spines down here as well um he also has gill plates that are pretty sharp so pretty much a stiff back perch is all about having uh some type of protection or spines on their body so they do not get attacked very easily and you can see their mouth they don't have very many teeth. They're more of a, a invertebrate eater or small crabs, like I said, little worms maybe in the water. And then their tails are similar to the catfish. They're not a very fast swimmer. They have more of a flat tail. So they have a medium swimmer if we classify them. And we classify it as a toadfish as a slow swimmer. Moving on to our spade fish. Um, this is spade fish, and this one is actually preserved. That's why it's brown. So it would be black and white stripes up and down. And then you can see their tail is more of a flat tail similar to the stiff back perch. So they, um, they're they a medium swimmer, I'd say. And then spade fish usually eat um, uh, jellyfish or small invertebrates, little crabs. Um, they like to eat little clams, stuff like that. And they, usually they're open water fish compared to all the other fish we've talked about. They're more of a bottom fish or they come up sometimes with spade fish usually swim up open water, similar to like a striped bass or a cobia. They're open water fish. And then our last fish we have here, this is our flounder that we talked about some in the PowerPoint. And you can see he's a flat fish. He has both eyes on the same side of his head and they have pretty sharp teeth. This one's a juvenile, so they don't have very many, but you can see their teeth right there. So they'll lay on the bottom and change. So if he was alive and we could put him on this table, he would most likely turn almost black, similar to the color he is. And um, if fish swam above him, they would ambush the fish, jump up, grab it, and go back down on the bottom. So that's how their adaptation is, being able to be flat and unseen. And flounder are another type of probably a medium to slow swimming fish. They don't have to go far very often, so they usually lay 
and the fastest they go is when they jump up to grab their um, food.